Hello, this is Mr. Huff. This is part three of simple beam analysis, and we are picking up from where we ended with the calculations of reaction forces uh, to this video. What we're going to be doing in this video is developing shear diagrams and moment diagrams. You will have to know how to do the calculations up to this point, and then this is just going to walk you through an example of developing both of those graphs. All right, so in our last video, we ended at this point. We had a beam that had a uniform loading of 650 pounds per foot times 20 foot, so overall it was 13,000 pounds. And then we had a point load of 4,000 pounds here, reaction force of 9,300 here, and a reaction force of 7,700 here, okay? So, and we knew that we know that there's a total of 17,000 pounds acting on this beam. All right, so what we're going to do for documenting your work for these diagrams, you're going to draw this and label it at the top of your paper, like this. Uh, you need to at least include the numbers around there. So, here you can see we've got the load, we have the total weight of the uniform load. We have the reaction force on the left side and the reaction force on the right side. Something else we need to know before we continue is right here at six feet and then this 14 feet, how many pounds is each one of those? So 650 times six, 3,900 for this section and 650 times 14, 9,100 for this section. Okay, at this point we understand all of the forces and weights of this system. All right, what we're going to do every time we have something that's interesting, a point that's interesting, we're going to draw a line from the top of the paper to the bottom of the paper. This is easiest to do on graph paper, um, but you can just use lines, but try to make this part to scale, and that's why graph paper is useful. So places where we have interesting things happening, where the reaction forces occur, these are going to cause the lines to go up. And where we have loads, uh, like the uniform load and the point load, and these are going to cause things to go down. So we need three dotted lines right now. So draw a line here, and then at the point load, and then at the other reaction force. All right. So give yourself some space underneath this diagram. Draw a line from left to right. This is going to be your zero line, and label it shear force in pounds. The first two things we'll look at is we have a reaction force pushing up. So we go from zero to 9,300. And then we have a uniform load for six feet, and that's 3,900 pounds going down. So if you look at this, we go from zero to 9,300. Then 9,300 minus 3,900 equals 5,400. So we put a point right here and draw a straight line connecting those. So we've added a line going up and then a line going at a slope down. Notice how I did not put tick marks here to show all of the uh, specific values. This is just visually proportional. Really the most important things we understand are these numbers. Uh, the scale can be off, but you can see that 9,300, 5,400, this is a little more than half of 9,300. So just kind of estimate proportionally where that's going to be. I don't, you won't have room on your paper if you start putting in the tick marks for all of these. All right, so just make it kind of proportional. The next thing we need to worry about is this point load. So here we go. The point load is 4,000 pounds, and it's going to push straight down, okay? So we are going to go from 5,400 minus 4,000. That's going to push us down to 1,400 right here. So put a point, mark it over here, and that's going to be real close to the zero line compared to 9,300. Again, it's just got to be kind of proportional, and we'll go from there. So... The next thing we have to deal with is the rest of this beam, the weight here. So we know that this beam weighs 9,100 pounds, so let's go take a look at that. 
we're going to take 1400 minus 9100 and that gives us a negative 7700 pounds so we mark that down here notice it's not as far from zero as the 9300 but more than the 5400 so estimate where that is and put a point and then draw a straight line that connects the two and then we have this reaction force here on this side and it is positive 7700 so we go from this point back to zero so if we did our math correctly we will start at zero go up come down come down some more and then return to zero and that will be true on the problems that I give you this week one of the things we need to understand here is where the line crosses zero so in this case we can find that we know at this point it's 1400 pounds and from here to this point it's uh, gaining weight at 650 pounds per foot so if we do a little bit of math here then we can find that this distance here is 2.15 feet and we know it's six feet from this side so six plus 2.15 is 8.15 and we know that the rest of the beam from this point is 11.85 about I rounded that uh, we'll talk more about that in a minute so this is the graphical analysis method and uh, we'll talk about some other things you could do in just a moment so there will be some a little it's gonna you will see some rounding errors as you go through this starting from your shear diagram uh, add a dotted line that passes through the point where our line crosses zero and go just like the other three so we should have four lines at this point unless this point load is at the center then it would be you would yeah okay so the next thing we need to do is drop down below this give yourself some room to work and we're gonna have a moment diagram and we're gonna start at zero uh, and before we can do anything we need to find the moment at this point and the total moment at this point those are two interesting things we'll see on the moment diagram so to find the moment here we need to add up all the area under this curve technically this is an integral function but we're doing this graphically so it's not a bad thing so if we look at this this is a rectangle that's 5400 by 6 and a triangle that is 3900 by 6 so we look at those two so if we're finding the area of a if you're finding the area of a rectangle it's length times width so we get this number for this area and if you're do, looking at a triangle it's one half times base times height which gives us this number for this little triangle here add those two together we know at six feet is 44,100 foot pounds at six feet then we're going to go from there to eight point one five feet so we're going to add this triangle to it which is one half your base times height which is your 1400 times 2.15 so you end up with 1505 pounds add all of those together and you find that the total moment at this point is 45605 all right so the next thing we need to do is mark those points on this graph down below we're going to mark these these numbers are really close together so this one and then the next one over is just a little bit higher okay so that's what we're seeing here that lines up nicely uh, there's another way to do this we're using a graphical method as I mentioned earlier you can also find this point and then sum the moments up to that point and find this number pretty close to the same so we are accepting uh, some error using the graphic method and another thing is if you find the area over here now that we know this point here if you take base times height times one half you get approximately the same max moment okay so this is the highest moment that the beam experiences and notice that our shear diagram ends at zero so we're going to put a point here so we start at zero we have two moments or two yeah two moment maxes or totals totals we'll call them totals two 
moment totals here and then return to zero. Uh, these are parabolic so you're going to have a little bit of a curve. Notice you have a big change going to a small change so it's going to start steep and flatten out. This is a combination of something that's going from a big change to a little change plus a straight line because we just added a force to it and so this one's just going to be a tiny little curve and then we're going to have another parabolic curve going from a small change to a big change so it will get steeper the closer you get here um, i'm not going to be real picky about these curves just make them obviously curved and mark these points so i know that you know what you're talking about all right so your graph will look like this when we finish something like that. Uh, it's hard to do um, parabolic curves in Google Slides. It's not very good. Okay, so it'll look kind of like this again. I want to see zero and these two moments and then zero and that will be plenty. So what I should see on your work, it takes about one page to do these diagrams. I would expect to see the diagram at the top, the shear force in the middle, and the moment at, at the bottom. It should be easy to read all your numbers. It should be easy to see your lines. And any work that you did should neatly be documented uh, somewhere like on the page or on another page to show me how you found the different values to fill in these graphs. So that's what I'm expecting to see. All right, that's plenty for now. Thank you for watching.